Apple just released iOS 16.5 beta 4 for registered developers and soon for public beta testers. Now, Apple also released beta 4 for iPadOS 16.5, macOS 13.4, watchOS 9.5, tvOS 16.5, and HomePod version 16.5. And taking a look at the size of this update, it came in at a clean 403 megabytes on the dot on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, as far as the build number for this update, if we head into our settings, and check out the build number, we can see that the new build number is 20F5059A. So we do have an A at the end of the build number, just as I predicted a few weeks ago. And after this, we should see RC, which we'll talk more about near the end of this video. However, one thing that has not changed is the modem firmware. So that remains at 1.70.02. So it did get updated in the previous beta, but there is no change from beta three to beta four in terms of that modem firmware version. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.5 beta four? And as you guys know, this is a relatively boring update as far as actual features and changes that you can see goes. This update seems to be mainly focused on performance, stability, and maybe battery life a little bit, although I haven't seen really a big difference at all in battery life going from 16.4 to 16.5. But nonetheless, I did notice one bug fix, which is this right here. And obviously it doesn't look like a widget, but that is the Siri suggestions widget, and that was not working properly in the previous beta. So this is one of my favorite widgets on the iPhone, and previously on beta three, this was just not changing the applications. Sometimes there would be blank spots right there, and it just was not working properly in general. But now it seems I can already tell it's already changed once since I updated, so it seems like the Siri suggestions widget is back to working as intended. There's also a small change inside of our settings. So if we go into settings, settings, wallpaper, and then add new wallpaper and scroll down a little bit underneath Unity, you will see that we have a new section called Pride. So in that Pride section, we have a description there. It's for the LGBTQ community. And we also do have one wallpaper. So that wallpaper is not new, but this section is new. And it looks kind of funny just having one wallpaper in that section, but I would assume that they are going to add, Apple's going to add more wallpapers related to Pride in the future, kind of like what we saw with Unity, where they added the new Unity a few months back. Now, just a quick update about macOS 13.4 beta 4. There are some reports of Wi-Fi and connectivity issues. So if you do have macOS 13.4 beta 3, it might be wise to just wait to update to beta 4 or just skip beta 4 altogether and just wait for the RC release. So it seems like there are people having network issues and Wi-Fi dropping out pretty consistently. And then also in the news application, of course, we have that new sports tab down at the bottom. And in the previous beta, we got this update right here where it said all sports on the navigation little button right there, whereas before it was just the lines, but nothing has changed here in beta four. Everything appears to be the same as it was in beta three. And also the screen recording via Siri is still not back. So let's try it one more time. Record the screen. And you can see it always says, I'm sorry, I can't do that here. Or sometimes since Siri isn't very smart, it'll give me some web results about like screen recording software. So for whatever reason, and it's still kind of a mystery at this point, and I still see a lot of people saying that you can do this in 16.5, like a lot of articles and everything are still saying that, but it hasn't worked since beta one. So I'm not sure if people just aren't testing the software, if it's just me testing it, but you know, I've tried this on multiple devices and it seems that, you know, screen recording via Siri is still not working and it hasn't worked for um, over a month now. Oh, and since people are still wondering every time, no, the select all inside of Safari is still not back. So when you select some text, there is still no option to select all. So I believe this disappeared with 16.4 and it is still not back here in 16.5. So unfortunately, it looks like Apple is just getting rid of the select all inside of Safari just as a change to the software. Now, I did also wanna talk about the iOS 16.4.1 security response update. So this is the first public security response update from Apple. So we saw this a couple times with previous betas, but for the first time yesterday on Monday, they pushed out the first public security response update. So if you're on 16.4.1, you would have seen this populate yesterday. It's a very simple, a very quick install. 
It doesn't take much time at all, and that's because it does not bring any new features or changes. All it does is patch a security vulnerability in the background. Now, I don't know exactly what security vulnerability that is. Apple did add a few CVEs in the back end to previous versions of iOS, but nothing is listed specifically under 16.4.1. So I'm not sure exactly what this address is. But nonetheless, once you do get that installed, it will look like this when you go to your about section in your settings and you will see the rapid security response down here at the bottom. And you do have the option to remove that if you want to for whatever reason. Although I would recommend most of you just keep that installed to keep your device as secure as possible. And I would also recommend you guys go into your software update section and go to automatic updates and just keep this toggle turned on for security responses and system files. That way it automatically installs those rapid security response updates. And if we take a look at the release notes for 16.5 beta 4, it shows exactly what we saw in beta 3. So we just have that new feature for the matter accessories where it says a shared administrator in a home is now able to pair and add matter accessories. And then we also have four resolved issues all related to matter accessories. So nothing has changed, it appears, from beta 3 to beta 4 in terms of what is mentioned in the release notes. So now let's go ahead and run a Geekbench 6 benchmark test to see how the scores compare to the previous beta. And as far as battery life, I'm not going to say anything about that because I highly, highly doubt anything is going to change in terms of battery life going from beta 3 to beta 4 because I haven't noticed a difference in any betas for a while now, since like the 16.4 betas. And yes, I monitor this all the time. I look at my charts. I try to find differences and everything is very very, very minor. And there's really been no major change in battery life for a while now. And you can say the same thing about performance, honestly, but it's still kind of fun to run these Geekbench 6 tests just to see how those scores compare to previous versions. All right, so we scored a 2518 on the single core, which is compared to 2508 on the previous beta. So a nice 10 point difference. And then we scored a 6249 on the multi-core compared to a 6168 on the previous beta. So also a nice jump in multi-core score. So performance, in theory, based on Geekbench, should be a little bit better. But as I always say, you're probably not going to notice a big difference in terms of day-to-day -day usage. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. It's really just kind of for entertainment value and just to see the scores that we get on a beta-by-beta -beta basis. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So just as I predicted a few weeks back, I would expect the RC next week on the week of May 8th, most likely on Tuesday. Tuesday, although the RC releases can always be kind of sporadic, they can really be released at any day after Tuesday, even on Monday sometimes, or even Friday. So it's hard to say. All I know is that we should see the RC next week on the week of the 8th. And then after that, we should see the final release of 16.5 finally on the week of May 15th, most likely right there on May 15th. And then after 16.5 gets released, I would expect to see the 16.6 betas fire up. So we should see those honestly as early as the very next day after 16.5 releases, or it could be as late as the following week after that. And then after those 16.6 betas, we're going to go on. All these numbers are making me jumble my words. We're going to go on to iOS 17 beta one right there on June 5th. That is going to be a big day. And of course, I will be live streaming and giving my overall reaction to iOS 17 at beta one because I think it's going to be a pretty solid update. But anyways, there you have it, guys. That is iOS 16.5 beta four. I'm sorry it's not more entertaining or any more, you know, feature packed than it is. But that's just kind of how it goes at this point in the iOS game like this point into at this far into an iOS release like 8.5 really no update in the past has been very exciting at this point, just because all of Apple's efforts at this point are going into iOS 17. So anyways, if you did enjoy this video, or at the very least, just enjoyed listening to my voice talk about this iOS update, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those future iOS 17 videos and a lot more content coming here to the channel very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.